Hi, and uh, welcome to my to this talk on uh, diagnosing issues in job applications using thermostat and Bypman. I'm Severin Gebov. I'm a senior software engineer with Red Hat. Uh, I mostly work on serviceability tools and OpenJDK itself. Okay, here's what we're going to cover today. Um, first, we're going to introduce a, a demo application because this uh, will be a case study uh, finding an issue in that, that application. Um, we're going to look at this demo application in thermostat and then uh, uh, do a brief excourse into Byteman. Um, and then uh, we look at the source code of that demo application uh, to understand this, this problem better when, when we look at, at, at uh, this application with, with thermostat and Byteman together. Uh, and finally, we, we, we conclude with a demo. Okay, so this is, this is a demo application. Um, you're, you're, uh, uh, you can download it at that URL. It's a simple Swing application. Uh, you can schedule fast and, and slow tasks. Um, uh, and we are going to figure out why uh, there's, there's uh, a difference between those, those two tasks. Okay. Um, sorry that this is cut off. Okay, so the, the, the problem here is the task execution times vary greatly. Uh, there's, we know there's fast and slow tasks, but uh, uh, as we will f see that uh, in the end, we, when, when we do profile runs, we only get uh, aggregate results, and we see that uh, the computation is stuck in this, in this black box uh, method, but we don't really know where the calls come from. And this is where, where we thought Byteman would help, and uh, that uh, will give us a, more, a better idea and better understanding and really figuring out why there's slow and fast tasks. Um, this uh, example is based on a, on a real uh, customer case. It's, of course, the, the, it's, it's simplified, but uh, it, it added, or we did this an analysis within Red Hat, and um, you know, so this, this isn't uh, something... Uh, totally artificial. So uh, what if we look at the demo application with thermostat? Um, we're, uh, well, thermostat, what, what's thermostat? Maybe not everybody knows what thermostat is. It's a, it's a serviceability tool uh, for OpenJDK and hotspot JVMs. You can extract uh, metrics from the JVM itself and visualize it in, in various ways. Um, you can run thermostat locally and remotely. Um, so what if we look at the demo application in thermostat? So here we can see there's, there's a, 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 a thermostat that allows you to see the host information and the JVM information. If you, if you look at the CPU graphs and run the, the demo application already, here we can see that we've scheduled uh, two fast tasks and one slow task. There's, there's uh, CPU cons consumption going on in the, in the in the JVM, and you see that, that uh, populating through to the host. OK, what if we look at uh, GC uh, of what, what, what GC cycles are happening when we run that uh, application? So here we can see there's, uh, um, when the tasks run, there's two fast tasks running again and one, one slow task. Uh, when the tasks are running, it, uh, it has a few uh, GC cycles. Um, uh, when there is a slow task running, there is a, a few more, but uh, overall they don't seem to uh, propagate those objects into, into the old generation. They seem to die young. Okay, what if we look at threads? Um, threads, uh, or a task, that this demo application, as we'll later see, um, is, uh, uses a class task, and a task is a thread. And so each time we create a new task, it creates a new thread. We see that nicely visualized in the thread uh, view of thermostat. And, and there you can already see, OK, we, we knew already that there is slow and fast task. But here we, we, we got some evidence that this is really the case. Uh, you see nicely that there's a thread created. Uh, once the task finished, it, it got destroyed. OK. So uh, let's try to find out uh, if we can really uh, see where the problem is. Uh, yeah, first, first uh, attempt is using thermostats profiler. Um, we do uh, two profiling sessions. Uh, to the left, we see, we see a, a profiling session of the fast task. To the right, we see a profiling session of the slow task. 
but overall, it, it really shows only that there's, it, it spends time in those two methods, but we don't really know why there's a difference between the fast and the slow task. The, the only difference is what we already know, the, the, the absolute times differs. Okay, so um, to conclude, uh, thermostat can, can help, uh, thermostat alone can help um, for understanding the problem better and uh, getting some, some evidence uh, narrowing down what, what, it might, what might actually causing this problem. Here it, we seem to have a CPU bound problem. And uh, when we do the profiling, we see, okay, there's no real difference between the fast and the slow task. So what now? Um, and this is, there, there we thought that we might need a tool where we can drill down on a specific problem in this, in this case drilling down on, on certain method calls. So we, we know already uh, time spent in, in this and that class and this and that method, but uh, what we, we need more detail. Okay, so we were thinking, can Biteman help? Um, yeah, uh, so what's Biteman actually? Biteman is an instrumentation tool. Uh, it does bytecode transformations using, a, implemented as a JVM TI agent, a Java agent. Um, the rules files are specified in a, in a domain-specific language. You, uh, it, it tells the, the agent which classes you, you can trans or it should transform and which methods. So you can be fairly selective uh, by using those rules files, what classes should be changed and how. Um, it's, it's really nice that you can dynamically load and unload rules as, as you might want to inspect into a or dive into a specific problem and uh, inject a certain rule while your application is running. You don't actually need to recompile your program or anything. You just have to attach the agent and, and, and load a rule file. Do your analysis and you can then later on unload the rule and, and the bytecode get, gets retransformed back to the original version. Um, that's quite useful. So what, what does an actual use, use, usage of Biteman look like? Oh yeah, you, you'd have to f know that there's this Java agent switch and uh, figure out the Biteman jar and script and thread and probably you have to specify a, a bunch of uh, properties. In this case, the transform all instructs Biteman to also transform um, JDK classes um, and if you wanna run it on an already running JVM, you have to know the PID, use the script, and uh, use two invocations and that, that sort of thing. It's, it's nice, but it, uh, we, we were thinking, could we do better? Um, because Thermostat knows already uh, the, the PIDs of the, of the JVMs, and um, it can figure out the, JVM, uh, the, the PID and load rules for, for, for Biteman, so that it's actually easier to use. So the thinking was, yeah, let's combine the two. Um, we were uh, thinking that in, in specific cases, as we've seen before, the, the, the profiling of that demo application didn't, was inconclusive. You, you would need more information to really figure out what's causing the, the, slow, the slowness of, uh, of the slow task and, the, and, the, and why are the, the, fasters, the fast tasks running faster. And uh, yeah, it, thermostat is e can help there to drive Biteman. You can just select the, the JVM, as we'll see in the demo later, and then uh, load the rules into that JVM. You don't have to know the PIDs and so on. And what's more, you can do your analysis, extract some metrics um, that you ad hocly uh, extracted using rules, Biteman rules files, and then you can uh, visualize that uh, using thermostat means. So we've, we've implemented that uh, as a thermostat plugin. It's extensible. So, okay, on to the demo. Well, almost. We need to look at the classes first because the rules files are, are tightly coupled to the source code of, of your application. So we've already determined that the profiler where, where, where most of the uh, time is being spent. Um, but we had, we had this compute intensive method and um, well, let's, let's look at class demo first. It has this uh, get fast task, get, get slow task methods. And the only difference there is, is the input variables. The spread is, 
is uh, for the fast task at, at an average of four, or, uh, the spread is at one, and the, for the fast task, the spread is at five, and they both average at 40. Um, if you look at the class task, then yeah, it has this black box compute intensive method and, and do work basically del delegates uh, to that. But our suspicion is, okay, so, so we're calling uh, compute intensive from this do work method. Is it actually that call that's causing the, the this, or that's call, causing that, that um, performance problem? Or is it some, some call on, of compute intensive somewhere else? Okay, so uh, we, we decided to instrument a uh, class task and do work and, and I await. Um, so we, we here with the class specifier, we, we specify the class and the method do work and we do some stuff when, when that method is entered. Um, we, we extract a couple of rare, or we set a couple of variables. Um, we uh, generate an ID, we capture uh, the input variable uh, using the dollar one sign, um, and then when the actual uh, heavy lifting is happening here, where we send stuff to to ther thermostat, that send method is implemented by the thermostat helper. Uh, so you can extend Byteman to do some stuff, and 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 we've we've written this helper where you can send th uh, stuff to thermostat, and and here we are sending. Uh, a metric called work, and it has a symbolic value of transition. We set it to call. Uh, we we set this uh, variable input to the to the actual captured input, and uh, give it an ID in order to uh, know which call uh, was actually done here. Because we have seen before, there's three calls to to do work and I/O wait. Um, the next rule is similar but at exit. So what we do some, some things when do work exits. Um, yeah, uh, we, we uh, extract a, the, the, the counter is, is something, I'm not going to, it, yeah, it's something built into uh, Byteman itself. Um, but here we can, we can get the elapsed time from a timer we've set it up in a, in a different rule. And again, we are sending some, some metric back to the thermostat um, using this. Uh, mechanism of an object array. It's, it's really a, a hash map there, but um, yeah. So we send a transition of return because we're returning and uh, sending the elapsed time. Uh, so uh, uh, at enter, we, we reset the timer for this uh, invocation and uh, at return, we, we're uh, gathering the, the, the time where that elapsed when we're returning. Okay, and so let's let's move on to the to the demo then. Um, I've, I've got it uh, pre-recorded due to time and constraints. Okay. Okay, so I start out where where I have well the, you can't really read can you? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I'm really sorry. Um, if you're if you're I have this screencast available online, but this this isn't. Okay, even though you can't really read, it, it, should, be, it should be okay for, for the, for the uh, chart demo. So I've, I've uh, loaded the rules here. Um, you, they're, they're all available online. And then, and then I inject uh, the rule by, by clicking a button into, by, I've, I've selected demo up there. 
But there, I, I don't see any metrics. And then they, when, once I execute the demo, they come into thermostat. And you see those metrics as we've uh, seen there before. There's weight metrics and, and work metrics. Um, that's that column. Um, I run the fast task ones and the slow task ones so that I get metrics for, for both of them. And um, uh, one, once that finishes, I, uh, I can select uh, the metrics I'm interested in. I, maybe I'm just interested in the ones that have an input field or an ID field. Um, and, uh, but uh, what I'm really interested in uh, is, yeah, how, how does the runtime uh, 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 look like for the fast task and the slow task? So if I, if I uh, switch to the, to the graphs tab, um, it, I, can, I can visualize the metrics in a, in a state transition graph where you, where you can see the, the, the transitions from, from call to return over a time. Um, so here I'm selecting, I'm selecting a, the timestamp as the x-axis and, um, and the transition value for, uh, as the, as the y-axis and, and filter by metrics that have marker work. And then I see, I see those nice transitions there. Uh, for the fast task, it, it almost looks uh, linear, but for the, for the slow task, I have the, the first call that, that pretty much returns immediately, the second call that takes longer, but the third call takes pretty much the, the most, most amount of time. And uh, we, we'll, we see that overall, yeah, the, the, the third call seems to be dominant, and it, and it indeed comes from, from this call from, from do work. If we contrast that same uh, chart for the I/O weight, so we we uh, want to make sure that it's not the I/O weight calls that are are influ in influencing the runtime, but here we can see that it's pretty much constant. So we we have three invocations; they they they're taking a constant amount of time for for the slow task or for the fast task. There's no difference there. So right here uh, we have the the, the evidence we wanted. That it's not I/O weight, we can that rule out, rule that out, and uh, it's really the the input values that influence the runtime here. So uh, if we visualize them uh, for the slow task to the left uh, and and the the fast task to the right, we see the input values of of, of 41 to to 39 and 45 to 35. And if we contrast that to the to the elapsed time we've captured with the rule then we see the interesting curve. The algorithm of, of compute intensive seems to be exponential here. Um, it's not as apparent for the fast task, but it, it almost looks linear. But for the slow task, we, we see that the, the third call is, is uh, taking the most amount of time. Contrasting that again for the, for the weight task, uh, we see all calls are pretty much every, at, at 500 milliseconds there. I'm really sorry about the resolution there. Uh, that's, that's what I wanted to show. Um, any questions? I have a couple of questions. Um, so the byteman, can it work without thermostat? So can you actually generate all those reports on the command line at the moment? No. Nope. No, you can't. Okay. Um, when you do send, when you send those objects out to the thermostat or whatever, can you go over the network, or has it to be uh, have to be the same machine? Uh, it. In, in, in our scenario, the, the, the thermostat agent runs locally on the where, where the JVM you're inspecting runs. So you can you can actually do the remote injection, but the, the but the extraction stuff happens locally. So so you can't inspect a remote a JVM you, you, running you on remote. Can, you can you can with, with, with thermostat and Bitemen together. You can do that. Yes. Okay. Um, and when you send the stuff, is it done by serialization or some other format or? Yeah, we're we're using uh, JSON to send the metrics to the thermostat agent, and that uh, carries the metrics off to the, to the database. You can you can do this after the fact as well. 
Uh, so you can you can do your your uh, run your byteman script, uh, unload the the byteman script so that your your uh, JVM you, that has a, a performance problem uh, goes back to original state. But you can do the uh, analysis in Thermostat even after after that that happened. So that's kind of, quite, kind of nice. Okay, thank you. Yeah, one uh, quick question. Um, so a couple of years ago, you had something like a uh, B trace in uh, in the J Visual VM. Uh, is but I think the project is, isn't that that's alive anymore. Could I compare? There's, uh, there's system tab. You mean. Sorry. Is that is that system tab you're referring to? Or? Yeah, it was like a language you can use in a J Visual VM to uh, or J console yeah. to okay. to yeah, instrument it. Could I compare Byteman, uh, something like that, uh, to fill that gap, perhaps? Uh, Byteman is purely Java bytecode, mm -hmm. so and it's 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 uh, largely tied to uh, Java code. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's it, it's bytecode, and and if you're if you're if I understand you correctly, you you mean uh, system tab probes in the JVM itself. That's yeah. that's more at a le native level. Yeah, I'm not talking about D trace, but B trace. So okay, I, I'm not, I'm not familiar with. Okay, Sorry. similar. To, to similar. There, there are a few, there are a few differences that make Byman uh, easier to use for for this kind, especially for large uh, um, project where you want to uh, uh, instrument m many classes. Okay. So so Byman was a little bit better choice. But it is, it's kind of similar. There are differences, obviously, uh, in the in the script and and so forth. But the overall idea is similar. Maybe maybe the the Bikeman site has has some. It has good documentation. It may may even show up in the in the FAQs if you if you're interested. Any more questions? <coughs> Thanks, everyone.